everybody, it's Allie and welcome back to December Daily. This is story number four. And one of the things that I wanted to play with today was I have a, a wood veneer number four. This is from a couple years ago, December Daily release. Um, I showed some of you guys, or I showed you in the foundation pages video, the original one, um, second one for this year, about my number box, right? My box of numbers where I've got felt, and wood veneer, and different things that we've done over the years. Um, got the five, I have, yeah, it's just fun. I like big numbers. And so one of the ones I had was a wood veneer number. And as I was thinking about something that I might want to play with today, it's Saturday here, so I have a little bit more freedom in terms of playtime, was I was looking in my stash of mink stuff. And I used the mink a couple days ago, and I thought it was really fun. And I don't use it very often, and so this is a great opportunity to use it. But what I wanted to try, I want to try running this wood veneer number through the mink. And I also wanted to try some of this reactive mist. So this is from Heidi. And I just watched a YouTube video that I'll link below for you guys to see like how she has used this in the past. The main thing it sounds like from the tutorial that I watched is that you really do need to make sure that this dries all the way before you actually run it through the machine. So my plan is to just spray this on there. Um, I also, maybe I'll do it with a stencil. Actually, I'm gonna grab a stencil and let's try. Let's try it with the with a stencil. Let's see what it ends up looking like. This is just a little bit of a little bit of playtime. I'm thinking like a polka dot. Maybe one like this. Just something that's gonna give it a little bit of a um, a little bit of a foundation. Well, the other thing you could use too is I know that she's got like a, a paint that I could probably use that too. Also, I believe that needs to dry all the way before you do it. So two options anyway. I could try. I haven't tried either one of these before, so maybe I'll maybe I need to do both. I was gonna see if I had any other stencils. There's a Tim, a Tim polka dot that's more organized, but doesn't really fit on there. There's also a star one. That might be harder to see. There's a little, okay, let's try that one. We're just gonna, we're gonna try, we're gonna try this out. And I think because of this, I think I'm gonna switch and I'm gonna use the paint instead. I'm gonna try that. So the idea here is that you're putting the reactive paint on there, you're gonna let that dry, and then I'm gonna run this through the make machine. So I'm gonna use, try the mist another time, but use the paint for this one. So if you don't have a make machine, obviously you could just do the same thing with paint, right? Stenciling on top. Um, but I'm just gonna pour, let's put a little on here and see what happens. I'm using just a palette knife to kind of spread it on here. And then I'm gonna use my heat gun to some of that up. My heat gun to set it and let it dry all the way before I run it through the mink machine. Okay, so very wet. It's I can already see that it's gonna be have stuff all over it, like that it was pretty thick. So let's just, we're gonna go for it anyway and see what it ends up looking like. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll, I'll come back on here and we'll see where we end up. Okay, while that is drying, let's talk about what I have for my story today. So when you were, if you saw yesterday, I had a, a very large photo for yesterday, part of yesterday, and today I'm gonna have a photo on the back here too, which is the outside photo of our house um, after Aaron did the lights. And then I have the Ducking the Halls card, so I'm gonna write a little bit just about how I approach decorating or what my approach to decorating is this year and how things are coming together. And then I have the four that we're playing with, so we're gonna see what that ends up looking like. 
I also have the Common Bright in here, which is just one of the um, die cut word pieces that were from the um, from the main kit. And one of the things that I talked about in the initial in the foundation pages video was maybe using this as a uh, making a shaker pocket with that, so I could put you know a variety of stars, whether they are ones like this or big or small or you know kind of turning it or not kind of but turning it into a shaker pocket maybe I would stitch along the top or something like that so that is still something that I want to do and then also thinking about what's going to go in this pocket up on the top so that's those are the things that I am tackling in my project today all right first step in actual construction on this one is to adhere those photos back to back Having photos as standalone pages that are adhered back to back is something that I've been doing for a number of years. Um, this is obviously the first time that I'm going this big with them, uh, but I find that they stand up well um, in terms of acting as pages on their own. You definitely have to be okay with fingerprints on the pictures, and if that really bothers you, you can always just go ahead and uh, put or print them at 8x10, print your photos at 8x10 and slip them inside of a page protector, right? So that's always an option, especially with this size of an album. I just like the texture, even the texture of the, um, the photos there too. Next up for me was moving on to this shaker pocket or starting the process of that. You can see that I'm holding the calm and bright um, die cut there inside and then I stapled it just to the front of the page protector so that it would stay in place and then I am dumping in some of the or actually the whole packet of small confetti stars that were included with the uh, star mini kit this year and then I'm also adding in a couple of vellum stars these vellum stars were part of a road trip mini kit that we offered in a travel collection earlier this year and I've been hanging on to them to be able to use um, in this project. So I'm layering those behind the die cut word there. So when we move into tomorrow, you'll be able to see those on the backside. I also wanted to play around, um, I'm using Tim Holtz's rub-ons again today, and my choice was to put them on top or actually add the rub-on to the outside of the page protector, which is something that you can do when you're working with page protectors is have things both on the outside and the inside. So I forgive my head in the in the full frame there. I am simply just rubbing on using a bone folder to rub on the text-based rub-on, and you'll see that in the images as well. I love the layered look of that. I like the look where the text is on the outside, then it's got the inside text, and then you have the stars. Now here is a look at the um, foiling and what happened with that. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that here in uh, just a second. Okay, so here's a look at how that turned out. Obviously it didn't, it's a little bit dotty, but it's also probably maybe was still a little bit too wet. Um, it's not exactly what I want, so I'm probably gonna end up doing something else in here, but it was fun to test that out and see what would happen. I think I probably needed a couple of things. One was to, probably not put as thick um, of this stuff on there or do it all thick just so that it all kind of melt merged together like that part actually looks kind of cool um, so anyway fun fun play time there you could always also add other things on to here um, I'm gonna look and see if I have something else I might want to add there so before I dove into my stash to see what else I wanted to add on to this one, I did print out a 4x4 photo on my Epson PictureMate PM400. If you're looking for a small printer, that one's awesome. It's also on sale right now on Amazon, so you might want to check that out. I've linked it for you guys below. Next up in my process was kind of going through my big stash of supplies here and thinking about what did I want to put in that other pocket. I pretty much knew that I didn't necessarily want to add another photo. So I'm going through and pulling out. I love all these tags. The big tags are still one of my favorite. Um, and then I have that home life um, felt piece there that was part of our day in the life kit earlier this year. I like the big black part of that. That is a nice compliment, I think, to the really dark black photo that I'm pairing this with. Um, so I'm, I kind of go back and forth and you can see I'm just, this is how I spend part of my time, right? Is evaluating <laughs> which things do I want to use? 
Um, right there, I just cut off the top of a metal rimmed circle tag. That's an office supply that I've been using for lots of years. I added on a number four puffy sticker. You could also use the ones from the kit. And then to um, attach or to close up the pocket, my shaker pocket, I pulled out my fuse tool. I haven't used this guy for a long time. Um, sometimes I will stitch on my sewing machine to close up a shaker pocket. Other times I will add washi tape and fold it over the top. But this time I pulled out my fuse tool and was again amazed at how great it worked. So that just basically adheres two sides of the page protector together. All right, so a couple things on this one. I went ahead and printed this out my journaling. I set it up on in Photoshop and then added my text on there. I actually did it two different ways. One, this is printing directly onto the journal card itself. So I measured how much space was available and then set that up and ran that through the printer. This was the one, this is a, the digital version of it that I printed on um, matte presentation paper. So depending on what you have and what you wanna use, if you're using the main kit, you can add text on there. You can always just hand write it obviously, or you can print out the uh, digital version. Just kind of depends on what your personal preference is. So that's gonna go ahead and slip right into the pocket. Again, one of the things that's fun about having pockets like this is that you can just decide what you wanna slip in and then slip the stuff right in, which is great. Um, the other thing that I was thinking about here, I looked at my photos. I thought maybe I would have another photo uh, that could be house related, but I didn't have one that I specifically wanted to use today. I like pairing it with obviously the full page outside photo, the story is about getting things decorated. And then I printed out, you saw me playing around a little bit with this and thinking like, do I want this to add on there? And maybe I still do, I'm kind of trying to decide. I also printed out, we had a set of four by four cards and um, actually this is on a template set. This word art is on a template set. So I printed that out, that kind of looked fun. I printed this, the one about the Grinch out. I think that what I wanted to see was what did that look like if I punched that really big, like punched it that, let's see if we can, I'm pretty sure that one of my things here would fit around there and then it would sit inside of this, but I might want to just save this for another story. I still kind of like that because I like how it ties the colors in and then I could put some ribbon on there too. So this is taking one of the larger tags. Home Life, this piece in and of itself is from um, the uh, Day in the Life kit earlier this year. And I really, another thing that I really like about that right there is the black. Um, and how the black ties into the, the dark photo here on the other side. I think I am gonna go ahead and use this and I'm going to, um, use the embroidery floss again to attach this on here. Let's go ahead and trim the bottom. I like that the tag can poke up a little bit out of the back side too of the, or out of the top of the, the um, tag. So depending on your story and the, you know, the number of photos that you might have, you might have a bunch more photos that you are wanting to use. You might have less, you might want to play around with, um, you know, you might have a longer story to tell. You might have, um, you might want to have photos and all of these things. I'm kind of playing around a little bit, just keeping my story focused on what I wrote there. And then you can also see the shaker part happening there up in the top with that word art. So for this, I'm gonna do just like kind of what I've done on the other things is just have a little bit of red right in the middle here. Um, and I always go through first and then come back up again. It's that the pop of red is what I'm really excited about having on here. Even just that little, a little bit there. I think I'll try to come back in and 
I really am such a fan of adding just those little pops of embroidery floss. I definitely find myself grabbing the red one the most, but maybe later on this month I will grab some green too. It's just a nice way to layer embellishments together and or to attach something onto a page. I ordered some new ribbon this year, so this is linked below if you want to check it out. It's a cute cream with a couple of red stripes on there. Um, that one I found on Amazon also. Stapling that in place because that's what I like to do with the ribbon on the top there and I like how that turned out I like the pairing of the home life with the um, cozy or you know the common bright in the top part the shaker um, as I was looking at that then I decided to pull out the photo with the metal rim circle tag and also add a little bit of the red embroidery floss on there I just kind of did like a plus sign is essentially what you'll see um, I'm working with a really small amount of embroidery floss because I was trying to just use what I had um, and so I go back and forth a little bit with that on here um, I also then use washi tape to you adhere it down on the back or just hold down the um, embroidery floss. Sometimes you can do that or you can do it with scotch tape too. I just couldn't find any because it's Christmas time and it's always hard to find scotch tape um, around the house during Christmas time specifically. So just going ahead and stitching that on there. Again, loving that little pop of red. Considered adding some little pop of red over to you onto the photo on the other side or some other embellishment, but decided that I really just liked it living on its own, especially with this um, um, kind of collection of embellishments, photo words, thing that I have going on over here on the other side. So definitely like working with this size page protector and this configuration. This is the first page that I've done with that. And I, I really like the 4x4 with the 4x6 pocket, so I'm looking forward to using that a couple more times in the album here this year. All right, that is pretty much a wrap on this one for today. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below, and I'll see you guys back here again tomorrow. Hmm.